How many of you read science fiction on a regular basis? Let me see some raise of hand if you read science fiction on a regular basis. That is terribly sad to see. Um, so if I were you, I'd take all those business and strategy books that you're probably reading that's on your nightstand, put them away. Put them away, put them somewhere else. Get some good science fiction books up there because science fiction writers, they're the ones who dream what engineers will eventually read and be like, I can build that. So if you read science fiction, you'll probably have a much better idea of what's actually right around the corner. And what is the zoo? Well, the way we define it is as Google's creative think tank for brands and agencies. And it's a very important distinction here to make sure that you understand that it's not an agency by any stretch of the imagination. Sometimes when people refer to uh, the zoo in the press, it's called Google's in-house agency. I'm here to tell you once and for all, we are not an agency. We work with agencies really closely um, and help them out in various ways. And the same thing with brands, but we're definitely not an agency. So what do we do? Well, we exist really to figure out fun, interesting, engaging ways to use the data and the technology uh, that Google has um, available. So the, we think that the two things where we can really help, we can really add value both to brands and to agencies is because of the ways we can dive into all the data that Google has access to and because we are close to the product teams at Google so we actually know a little bit more than the average person, I would say, probably a lot more about what's possible, how we can bend and break and have fun with uh, the things that, um, that we produce at Google. So those, that's what we are, and that's what we do. The world has gotten so incredibly complex. It is truly difficult for one agency or one entity of any kind to really do, understand, and be able to make everything. So when they put this slide up, it says individual award entries with three or more agencies credited have a 42% higher win rate than average. It kind of made my, made my mind blow, because 42% higher win rate than average is a huge number. But it makes sense. It actually makes sense. You know, if you look 10, 15 years back and you looked at the complexity of a campaign versus what a campaign looks like today, all the different touch points that you have, all the different channels you need to fill, I would say it's almost impossible to find a single partner out there that can do all of it. But uh, you can certainly get together a group of people who are uh, collaboratively minded and do amazing things. Let me talk a little bit about how I look at the tools that, uh, and platforms and systems that we have at Google. Um, I always say that the best way of looking at it is essentially to think about them as uh, a box full of Legos. Uh, you can apply them in so many different ways. You can bend them, change them, shape them to your uh, desires. Um, and I really do encourage all of you to take a look at the things I'm about to talk about and, and think about what can I do with it? What can my brand do with this? What can you know, my agency do with this for some of our clients. So the great John Lasseter, who's the chief creative officer at Pixar and, uh, and Walt Disney Animation Studios, has this great quote where he says, art challenges technology, technology inspires art. I've sort of been force feeding that to my team at the zoo uh, over and over and over and over again until if I wake them up at four in the morning and say, what is it John Lasseter says? They'll probably be able to quote it back to me. At least I'm hopeful uh, that they will. And I think this is so inspirational, and I think it's so true for how we interact with, with art and technology. And I love it. Well, just to calm everybody down as I wrap up here, uh, you know, I always end these presentations that are about the future by saying, you know what? Technology might change, and technology might evolve, and technology might do different things. But fundamentally, people really don't. You know, Maslow's pyramid of, pyramid of needs stays in place. It doesn't change at all. We still need food, shelter, and water. And you might be able to put internet access under food, shelter, and water at this point as well. Um, but you know, generally people stay the same, which is why I think of the user first is one of the key things that I always try and tell my team to make sure you keep that in mind. But I'm not just saying this. I can actually prove it, and I can prove it through data. So if you look at this uh, slide from Google Trends, where we compare two things, Compare the search for hangover cure and the search for best of Netflix. You'll see that there's an almost perfect correlation <laughs> between the two. And it spikes on January 1st. <laughs> Who'd have thought? So like I said, technology changes, but people remain the same.